Okay, um, good morning, everyone. We are really excited to have you here. We're on our Center for E-Learning Hit Parade, Say You, Say Me, doing communication planning for your online courses. I'm Kathy McPherson. I'm an instructional designer, and we are on our um, maiden voyage of remote recording of our professional development session. So thank you for joining us. And I'm with Dr. Summers as well. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Um, okay. So congratulations on finishing the first week of school. We uh, were excited about the first day of school last week, but folks were in school, so. <laughs> Um, how did it go? Are you tired? Are you are you having a, having a good time? Judy, did your, your first week go well? Yeah, it went very well. As always, I wonder about the ones that don't show up the first day, but uh, you know, you just have to go with it. But uh, but yeah, it went well, and uh, and they seem to be they seem to be willing to go with uh, my flow. <laughs> That's wonderful. I hope everyone's enjoying interacting with your students and that you're off to a great start. Really glad that you're taking the time to join us today. Um, our objectives this morning, do you want to talk, talk about that a little bit? Sure. Okay. Isn't that showing up where you guys are? No. Oh my, okay. Why is that happening? Sorry. So we are going to be talking about the importance of having some specific ideas in our mind of communicating uh, with our students throughout our courses. And one of the things that we recommend through the center is, a, uh, is to have a communication plan. Interesting, most of us think about what we think we should do, but having it written down gives us a specific guidance, guidelines, and knowing why we choose the way we do to communicate is really important. So we're gonna talk about communication plans. Okay. So, sorry, Dr. Schwerin, we're, we're sorry. This is our first time. We're, uh, just bear with us for a second here. No problem. Oh, it's great to have you. How was your first week, by the way? Terrific, thank you. Excellent. That's great. Okay, so um, we um, we started a Padlet and um, discussing what are the most important things that you communicate to your students. Um, and let's see, we've got that um, the input of the students is important. Um, Mary, are you there? She's there. She, yeah, you just have to, she's muted right now. You muted? Sorry, let me unmute you. Yeah, I'm here. Um, I wrote that, you know, in classroom rules and, uh, you know, classroom stuff, I feel that I need to communicate who I am as a teacher, as a person, and something that is very subtle but really important is what the general tone of the course is. So I think that's really important to get across. Okay. Um, is, does anybody else like to jump in for the things that we shared? Um, I want my students to know that their input is really important. And, um, I want them also to know how to be successful in the course, that, that I'm absolutely on their side, that, that the goal is their success. And i um, just wanting to make sure that everybody knows the expectations and um, that the um, essential items are communicated clearly and specifically. Thanks, Judy. Yeah, and we, those things are important. And, but I think even more important is, like uh, like Mary mentioned, the uh, across who we are as a teacher and how we how we cross uh, our teaching persona. And often there's a slightly different that's a 
slightly different approach from who we are. Definitely, we need a different approach. But who we are in our in our workplace, or who we are in uh, our yoga class, or in you know. So we have we respond differently in different environments. So we need to have a clear idea ahead of who we are as a teacher how to get that across to our students. Mm. So this morning, um, we're going to share a couple of things. We have communication toolbox, and um, I love this picture. It reminds me of my stepfather. Do you all have a, a male in the family who loves this toolbox? Um, or maybe female, too. I have my own toolbox, and it really bugs me when my kids don't put the tools back where they belong. <laughs> um, so one of the tools that we recommend at the Center for eLearning is a Start Here page. Um, this is really important in your online course because it, it really helps your online students to know what do I do first. When you're in a face-to-face -face class, it's a matter of where, what room am I in? And I thought, Judy, when you said um, you wonder about the students who don't show up on the first day, it took me a half an hour just to park yesterday on that campus. So maybe they don't know where they're going. Um, Online, we definitely want people to start off knowing where they're going. So we've started, we have a Start Here module. This is uh, Canvas, which is going to be our new learning management system. And it's got everything that your learner needs to get started successfully. Um, it gives them information about their class, making sure, yep, you're in the right place. Um, you get course descriptions and you also get technical support. How do I get my problems fixed online? How do I get help? What do I do about my assignments and course material questions? We have an app for how to, how to do Canvas on your phone and things like that. Lots of, now the reason this is not just, ooh, look what we have. This is available for everybody at FAU who wants to build their, well, everybody's going to build. <laughs> of course. Everyone's going to be building their courses online. And so um, we all need this information. So we'll be sharing this out as, as the courses are getting built. Um, and it just really helps people. Now I'm sharing this in a course that I'm building. It's a professional development course on Google Apps. And the reason I'm sharing this is because there's the item on badges that I really want to promote and share with you guys. So you've got um, meeting your professor, the course description, your course objectives, the blueprint, which is a tool that we use at the Center for eLearning. And we'll be happy to teach you more about that. There's a course navigation video, which shows you how to get around. Um, and I want to stop also on the syllabus. The syllabus is going to be there, be there too. You've got your policies and things, and then you move into information about the course. For my course, you can build badges, which is really, really fun. Um, when you finish your unit, these are the badges that you can earn, one unit at a time, and uh, course-wise. And then here's your learner introductions. So that Start Here page is something that, that we <laughs> recommend. Thank you. Um, I'm going to this down. Then you have your syllabus. And everybody knows, well, I don't want to say everybody knows, but that's pretty standard at the university level to have a syllabus. We do have a syllabus template that the instructional designers for the Center for e learning have built. And this is something that we would share with anybody who comes through the Center for e learning and anybody who asks for it. And really your syllabus, regardless of the format that you take, provides vital information, the course information, the instructor information, tools for success, and then um, information about your assessments. Um, 
I know, Dr. Summers, that you're giving um, a training on assessments specifically pretty soon. Is there anything that you want to share at the syllabus level about communicating about assessments? They should certainly be listed in the syllabus and, and also included um, the method that they will be used, whether it's a, a test or a, an essay or something that needs to be submitted as well as the value within uh, as it adds to the total for the, uh, for the, for the grading. Mm -hmm. So thank you. And, and um, so we've got this, this waiting table here and your grade scale. Then, of course, there's your late assignments policy, make up policy and incomplete policy. You know, all of these things, whether you're face to face or online are really important to clarify with your students. Okay. Netiquette is another piece that's pretty important. Um, how do you want people to address each other and understand? Where we're talking about the online environment. Uh, so many people are used to the very casual way of communicating uh, through other means for whatever, uh, whatever devices they use and they need to understand the difference in professionalism and the way that they are expected to communicate with each other and to uh, the instructor through the course. So netiquette is a key piece in an online environment, especially. Thank you. Um, and since there are just a few of us here, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute Mary and Dr. Schwerin, you're on mute too. If Let's just use this as a discussion time. If there are pieces that you want to, you know, put in, we're recording this for others who might use it later on um, for their own resources. And, and you all are just as expert as we are. So it's this community of practice. Anything that, that you're wanting to share, just go right ahead. Yeah, well, about the syllabus, um, I and we look at it as, kind of the, the uh, contract between the professor and the student. So everything that you want to communicate uh, should be on your syllabus ahead of time. So and we refer to it as the professor's document. This is very personal and a professor will definitely adapt it to its own teaching style. So it's of course, we've had, there is some um, yeah. possibility of discussion on that. Um, in, indeed, we do have to have the information in the syllabus for there, in case there's any questions about things that come up, we can clearly say it's in the syllabus. I was recently reading an article that had to do with uh, the fact that many professors that we deal with consider the syllabus a legal document and even to the point of requiring their students to sign it. Yeah. The article that I was reading indicated that this uh, automatically sets, some ad sets up an adversarial position between the two. So there's different sides to yeah. it. Yeah. You definitely have uh, anything that you want to make sure you your students know. Uh, yeah, I have I have seen courses where some of the classroom rules are put up front, and students have to agree, click on a button, and so that the rest of the course will um, open. So that's I think it, it's kind of the same. Um, Personally, I I have done it, and it depends on the students too. It depends on how mature the students are. Um, if this is a freshman course or is it? So depending on the professor, depending on the students, uh, these are things that need to be considered. Absolutely. Yeah. And we are doing an, uh, specifically a syllabus workshop pretty soon too so it'll be that's a great topic to bear in mind so more more coming up 
The one piece that I really want to draw attention to in the syllabus right now is the communication policy. Your expectations for your students, your plan for classroom response, time and feedback. Um, this is a piece that I want us to, to just pause for a minute and think a little bit because there is suggested wording in the template, but I think it's worth stopping for a minute to think about your unique form of communication as an instructor. You know, what's your style? What are your boundaries? Why is this important to express to your students? Um, The question about what's your style? Here's a picture of uh, Aaron Gruel, who was the teacher who um, led the students who wrote the Freedom Writers Diary. And she's on one end of the continuum because her students became her family, pretty much. Um, and then, you know, we've all been there. Some some teachers we remember. They want to have lunch with you. Um, as a graduate student in a fully online program, I had a professor who gave her cell number to everybody and said, please feel free to text me anytime. Um, as an undergraduate, I had face-to-face -face professors who invited students to their home for dinner parties. Um, and then other professors had a different style, different boundaries. Uh, they preferred to lecture and answer questions in class. And if you wanted to see them, you did it during office hours or made an appointment. Um, I'm pretty sure there's, there's teaching assistants graded my exams. And that's fine too, it's just that's their style. Um, and I think especially in an online class, we, wanna, we really recommend defining your expectations for communication. Um, we're gonna take just a minute to talk about why. Um, the communication policy benefits the learners. It really, really does. Uh, there's a picture of a kindergarten playground here because there's an old story. Uh, Dr. Dobson, who is the host of a family talk radio program, tells this story. He says that uh, during the early days of the progressive, progressive education movement, one enthusiastic theorist removed the chain link fence from a nursery school playground. He thought the children would feel more freedom of movement without the visible barrier, but what he found out was that this, the children actually stayed closer to the building. They didn't feel safe. They didn't feel free to wander. They didn't wander away. Um, they didn't even venture to the edge of it. Um, when I heard that, I was surprised, but it made sense. When they put the fence back, the kids went to the edge of the fence and went as far out to it as they could, even climbing on it, but they stayed inside. And I do know this is higher education, not kindergarten. So let's just share that um, adults really like boundaries too. <laughs> um, I would love to go on this, this scenic ride. It looks beautiful. But how would you all feel if, um, if those rails were taken off the, the bridge? Uh, for me, I... Hmm? Hello? I'm sorry, I thought you said something. Yeah, I just said that I would be a little reluctant to do that without guardrails, though I have to say I have been on a cup, not quite that drastic, but been on a couple of them without the guardrails. Yeah, I don't, I would not, and the thing is, is I've never actually hit a guardrail. I don't, I can drive on that side, but I don't want to, you know, it just feels safer with the rail there. I also really like the fact that there's a line in the middle of the road, so I know where my side is <laughs> and where somebody else's side is. Yeah, it's, it's a little, it's a little more, um, Tenuous when there's when it's a one-lane road too. There is, and so if I were driving on this road, I think I would be focused. If there was no rail there, I would be focusing on the road. With the rail up, I can focus on the scenery, the actual the ride that we're taking, as opposed to um, staying within the boundaries. 
that make sense? Sure. Okay. So when we're working on a, um, oh, we don't want to do this so much. We're talking about a communication plan. Uh, we're looking at different tools. And as we think about it, we want to say, am I going to use this tool? Uh, how and why will I use it? What is the relevance of it to the learners? What are the parameters that we want to use it? And what are my expectations for my learners? And then do I have any questions or concerns about the tools? Um, so for announcements, you know, we're thinking about how frequently are you going to use it? What's the purpose? Announcements, um, Judy, do you want to talk a little bit about announcements of yeah, there's a fine line between inundating the students with announcements and, and getting it so that they get the information that they need. You never know how many of them just delete your emails, but at least when it's in there as an announcement, they can go back and refer to it if they need to. Um, how frequently, uh, that's, that's uh, again, a part of your own personal how you want to come across to them. And a lot of it depend, would be, be dependent upon the course and the level of the students, you know, undergrads versus graduates, or if it's, um, I don't know what, how you would even, what, what comparison, but depending on the, the type of a course, what the content is would be uh, how often you would use it. So it's, it's to get across information in front of everybody to know and see and get right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And um, I think that in Canvas, learners get to choose how to receive the announcements, which method they prefer, whether it's email or texting. Um, so that's kind of nice too. Then we have our course calendar. This is going to be a much more dynamic tool in Canvas than it is then I found it to be in Blackboard. Um, when I put an assignment into my course, it immediately goes to the course calendar. And when I upgrade it, it will be immediately upgraded. So if I change the date or change the information, it'll be changed across the board, which is a really nice feature. Yeah, I'm looking forward to having, uh, to being able to use it in that way in Canvas. I will make a true confession. I don't think I've used the, black, the calendar in Blackboard much at all. <laughs> it, it makes sense because, you know, but you certainly put your dates very specifically when, when your items are available and when they'll close and things like that. So being clear about the due dates. Um, we talked a little bit about late late policies and uh, frequency of, of um, what's the word I want to say, participation, that sort of thing, being clear about it. And then discussion boards. Um, Judy, would you mind talking about discussion boards as well? Of course. Um, I typically try to have uh, a discussion board in, well, depending on how we set the units up, but at least in every other unit. And when we're talking about discussions in an online course, I find it to be a, a really positive experience because I have students that would not speak up in a face-to-face -face class, the ones that choose to sit at the back of the class. And when you ask a question, they either look down or look up at the ceiling and it's just as if it's gonna appear up there. And, and yet within a discussion board on a, in an online class, they have time to think about what they want to say. They might write it out and edit it somewhat before they post it. So it's a, a, a discussion board in an online class is really, really strong piece of it. And of course, you have to set the parameters and the guidelines for it in order to get the responses that you want. Thank you. Um, I'm excited about the fact that you can put in multimedia into your discussion as well. You can make it a podcast, you can make it a video. That's, that to me speaks to different learning styles, not learning styles, but 
Yeah. Um, intelligences. That's what we talked about. Yeah. And that's, that's also a component of the discussion board in Blackboard. We often have, uh, have videos posted in there as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we also talked about, um, sorry, just the other day we were collaborating about the, the question and answer forum. Having this as the, a place where students can go to get their questions answered first. Um, and um, Julie Golden was telling us that she likes having that because she doesn't always get to the questions right away. Students tend to have the same questions, but there's always someone in the class who's eager to share what they know and eager to share, um, answer other people's questions. Well, that Q&A forum really meets the needs of several different learners at the same time. Making that available is helpful to everyone involved that the professor doesn't have to answer the same question over and over again. The learners can get their questions. Email. Um, email is, it looks like this in um, Canvas. It's a little bit small, but the question was asked the other day, uh, when it shows up in my Outlook, will it also go into my Canvas account? And the answer is yes, depending on the settings that you have, it will definitely go into your inbox, but you'll also get it pushed out to wherever you wanted it to go. Um, and, you know, how many emails do you want to receive? Uh, if someone doesn't tell me how many, I, I have so many words. <laughs> I can't tend to over, overwhelm people, and I have heard in the past, uh, just hit me once a day, okay? <laughs> Grading and feedback on assignments, so, so, so important. And we talked about it in terms of building your teacher presence within your class, what kind of uh, feedback and dialogue that you're giving to the learners. Um, and now we can talk about it in terms of um, what their expectation of their teacher is. Um, Dr. Brown, since you are the, I mean, Dr. Summer, since you are the, the professor in the room, <laughs> you want to talk about uh, setting your boundaries in terms of giving your feedback? Well, they, um, for me, the, my primary means of giving feedback is through the rubric. I set a rubric up for most, particularly for the primary of, uh, assignments. And um, within that rubric, I have, that have it broken down as far as the degrees of, of what, what my expectation are for the different pieces of it. And then there's also a place to put comments about each one of the individual sections. So I like to rely on that as the, uh, as the feedback component. It's also, uh, to me, a key piece to let them uh, re resubmit. Take the feedback and resubmit as long as they're willing to use the feedback and uh, and, and make the changes. So, uh, yeah, but there's again, you've got learner expectation, but it's also the teacher expectation as well. It's, they have to know what we want and how we want it, and, and we have to be able to express that to them. Exactly, exactly. Thank you. Okay, and we had wanted to do the Google Slides, um, but I think we're, we're choosing not to do that today, unless, um, yeah, sorry. So uh, we discussed the benefits and structure of a strong communication plan. Um, before we kind of finish off, um, Dr. Schwerin, did you want to share anything with us or? Um, any thoughts on, on the topic? Um, actually, I'm just checking in today because I'm still, uh, as many of us are, uh, learning how to do this uh, different style of teaching um, and seeing if there's some something that I'm not doing I should be doing. I'm finding it reassuring so far that I, I'm, I'm doing most of the things that you're talking about. So it's very useful from that point of view. 
Uh, one of the questions I did have uh, is, um, are these sessions uh, being recorded? Because I've missed some. I'd love to go back and, and, and review some of the earlier sessions. We will definitely send you the links to some of the previous se sessions. I'm looking at the two gentlemen that will take care of that. So we'll definitely make sure that you have access to previous sections. And in, in, I, I would, if you don't mind, would like to address your other comment. Um, effective teaching is effective teaching. Format for it may change a, may, may change a little bit of how you do it, but if you're if you're an effective teacher in a face-to-face -face class, it will it will come through in your online as well. Some little tweaks, and we're here to help you with that. But but uh, but but you know what has to happen. You know what your students have to have to accomplish to get. To to be successful in your class, and that doesn't change. That's reassuring to know. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's really great to have you here. Um, and Mary, were you, did you want to add anything? Or I've just unmuted you. Am I unmuted now? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, thank you. Um, okay. I think you covered everything. You and Yuri did a great job of, you know, going through every single one of those tools. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thanks for being with us. Thank, Thank you, you folks for putting these on. We appreciate oh. it. Yeah, of course. We enjoy it. Uh, and we just, we really appreciate your time. And hopefully this has, I'm glad to hear that it's given you a little boost of confidence. You know, we find that having time with our colleagues is great for morale and great for sharpening up the tools that we already have and sometimes putting a new tool in our box. I love this picture because um, it shows tools that are have been used. You know, it's not, the, it's not the Home Depot brand new shiny tools. It's the ones that have been worn down and um, need a new blade every once in a while and they're covered in sawdust and I just feel that that's what being a teacher feels like a lot of times that uh, gosh let me just take a couple of minutes and and sharpen up what I have and boil them up and clean them up and that kind of thing wipe off my sawdust absolutely absolutely um, coming attractions we we offer these sessions every Monday and Friday and please tell your friends we we love to see more and more people coming in. Um, on Monday, we will be discussing the Canvas Commons, which is a really neat aspect of our new learning management system. Everything, it's all about open sourcing. It's a real paradigm shift for a lot of us, and, and we're going to dig into it. Not too deep, but just kind of get started with it. Um, can you tell us about Friday, Judy? Oh, yes. We are going to be talking about uh, making a metaphor of uh, teaching as being uh, gardeners and what we have to do to make it uh, to, to grow successful students. Mm. So it's our, join us for our garden party. It'll be so much fun. And then Monday, yay, Labor Day, we get, everybody gets a day off. And uh, then Friday, we'll be back. The ninth will be back with writing effective discussion boards. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot that, that we can delve into as far as discussion boards and being able to make them uh, a vital part of an active class. So have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and uh, we hope to see you back again soon. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh,